The last menu item that's available is the help menu and you click on that and you get to uh, Hoboware Help. Hoboware Help is a, is a great resource. It has everything that the user's guide has in it, but it is searchable. So if we click on Hoboware Help, it opens up and here you can search. For example, if you search on launch, it gives you all these different topics that have to do with launching different types of loggers. So uh, Hoboware Help's a great resource. Keep in mind that it is relevant up to the version of Hoboware you're using. So what that means is that if you have a version that an older version of Hoboware, it will only go up, will only be edited up to that revision. So uh, the next time you update your Hoboware version, which is always available free of charge from our website, the help um, text will also be updated to all the latest information. So, and you can always go on our website and search on manuals under resources and or go on the um, the support page and get your uh, updated Hoboware user's guide or update your version of Hoboware and you'll get the latest version of Hoboware help. One other detail I wanted to just be clear on is even though this is being opened in a browser, this is not living on the web. This, you don't need internet access to get access to Hoboware help. You can see here it's opening, it's under program files in a folder called Onset Computer under Hoboware. So you don't need internet access to access Hoboware help. You just need to be able to open an HTML file uh, in which the association is a browser. The other selections under help are uh, to check for software updates. Again, you, you do need internet access for that. This is where you can manage your license key. Uh, if this is Hoboware Pro, uh, because it's purchased, um, this is available with the free version of Hoboware also. However, you don't really need to do anything with license keys with the free version, although there is a license key recorded in there when you install it. We have a couple of utilities that allow uh, that help us troubleshoot the so problems with the software, and typically you would not do this unless instructed by our technical support staff. Basically, what they would do is if you were having some kind of problem opening a file or, or some kind of with some kind of operation in Hoboware, they would have you check off enable logging. You would close Hoboware, reopen it, and then try that function that's been giving you problems. When you in encounter the problem, then go to help and click submit technical support request and you fill out this form and that log file that you created is automatically attached to it and then uh, we can uh, dive into, uh, go under the hood, if you will, and look at that log file and see what's going on. And again, the other selection is about Hoboware Pro, which is our splash screen that shows up by default. When you open the software, this, there's a preference to turn that off so it's not displayed when the, every time the uh, software is opened. The other things that are available, um, we talked about menu options here. The same functionality is mirrored th with all of these, these quick access icons at the top of the screen. So some of them are um, only available when your logger is connected. And some are have to do with what you want to do with da a data file that's open. So we're going to show you both. So I have a, a water level logger here connected. So these first few are available for us. Uh, the first one is launch device. So if you click on that, it takes you right into the launch screen. The other one is readout. And again, it goes in, it reads it out. Again, I'm just going to bypass this. I don't want to plot it or anything. Status is, the next one is status. It has the little heartbeat on it. And this tells you what's going on with the logger immediate, uh, what's going on with the logger right now. So again, we should be familiar with this from some of our other courses, but basically it tells us the information about the logger, what its current status is. In other words, right now it's stopped, so it's not logging, but this is the way it was configured the last time it was launched. And then down below, we can actually see what the sensors are reading right now, and it's being refreshed every 15 seconds. Um, even though it's not logging, it's telling me what my sensors are reading. Keep in mind that the status screen uses lots of power from the battery in the logger. Some people get 
they get tempted by this for loggers that don't have LCD displays on them to leave them like this to kind of get a real a real time uh, display of, of of conditions. I would not use it that way because you are you keep in mind that the the reason these loggers last so long on their battery um, power is because most of the time they are sleeping they're in low power mode they wake up they're designed the the firmware algorithms in these things and the, the logging intervals that we have set are designed to maximize battery life based on what your logging intervals are set to your sampling intervals are set to so it they are maximize uh, the battery life is maximized based on um, the fact that a lot of the time the logger is in low power state if you leave it in this status screen it is turned on full bore all the time so again you're going to use up your batteries really really quickly and we cannot be held responsible for short battery life if you use it this way it's not designed to work that way so it's important for you to understand that the other uh, icon here with a little stop sign is stop device again this logger is not logging so it says it's already stopped you can't stop it there's another icon here that is select device. If you had multiple loggers connected uh, to your USB port or to uh, a combination of USB and, and um, serial ports, you would see multiple loggers selected. And you can click on which one you want to um, connect to by clicking on the little radio button here. You cannot, Hoboware does not have the ability to communicate with more than one logger at one time. So you have to select which one you want to talk to. So to review the rest of the functionality up here at the top of the screen, let's open a data file. So we're going to say file, open data file, and we're going to open this file from a U22 water temp pro. And now you can see we have access to all these different functions up here as well, which relate to um, how data is plotted and how you can manipulate manipulate how your data is being viewed. Um, so still, we're still moving left to right. Here's where we can set if we want US, US or SI units. Uh, US is degrees Fahrenheit in this example. These are just temperatures. SI is degrees C, so we'll leave that in degrees C. And again, this can be set in your, in your preferences as well. These are our undo and redo buttons which are grayed out because we haven't done anything yet once we do we can um, show you how those work here is our open data file again we did file and open data file but if you wanted to open another data file you could just click here and it would allow you to search through your and again it takes you back to that last folder location that you were in the little floppy disk drive is to um, save a project file. Keep in mind that data files, when you modify them, you can't save them in their original format. So in other words, this is a .hobo file. You cannot modify and save a .hobo file. That was a conscious decision that we made. If you make a change to how this is formatted, or if you want to crop out certain parts of your data, or change colors or add labels or all of that stuff, you have to save it as a project. So when you click on the little save icon, it says it's going to save it as an HPROJ or, or Hobo project file. The X is to close this plot. So if I, if I click on this, it will close this file and then we'd have to reopen one. Here's a quick access to exporting our table data, which we talked about under file, export table data. And again, that's your data table is all of these points, time and date stamp and the data values. And that will be exported in the format that you chose um, when you set your export preferences. Here's a quick uh, icon to getting, uh, getting to print. Uh, we talked a, uh, quite a bit uh, in several different courses about these icons right here in the middle. And these are your pointers or your cursors. So your arrow tool is the most functional. This is what you use to select um, series, either in the plot or in the details pane. The crosshairs tool gives you the ability to 
plop a, a crosshairs at a specific location in your data file and then it takes you right to that location right here and so this is your data point number your time and date and the value and again you can move that around just by clicking different places if you want to remove it right click and say remove crosshair the hand tool gives you the ability to grab again see that as, as I click left left click my mouse it closes its fist and then you can slide it this way if you do it on a time on an axis you slide your axis this way time axis you slide the axis this way if you have multiple axes of data in other words if this was temperature water level maybe some other things you could just grab one axis at a time and slide it up and down the zoom tool the little uh, magnifying glass when you when you get your pointer turned into a zoom tool you can draw by left clicking on your mouse you draw a little box around a specific area in a file and then click inside of it and it zooms right into it if you want to go back to your full screen we're gonna slide over a little bit and right here there's a little box it's a show graph at full scale if you click on that it takes you right back to where you were before Subset statistics we talked about in a previous uh, video, but basically you get a little compass, a little uh, draftsman's compass, and you left click to start a point, drag it to here, boom, and this shows you how long uh, the time period between those points, 13 hours, 33 minutes, 51.04 seconds, when it started, when it stopped, and then down in here you get all your subset information, um, how many data points min max average and standard deviation from average and if you click on the little X here that goes away we also have a couple of other little zoom in tools these are just um, oriented to the center of the plot so if you click on it you can see it zooms in just in that center plot zoom out again this is our show graph at full scale so if you change something again if you had done that you said oh I don't want to do that if you click on show graph at full scale it takes us back to where we were before this is our graph properties information again this is just how you want the graph to be viewed if you want to see the legend which is over here if you want to see the title which is right here if you want to show a border around it or not next one over is to show uh, toggle grid lines on or off so these are vertical so if you click on that they go away if you click on it again they come back same thing with horizontal you can also mark all your points so these are actually all every data point that was recorded in this data file these are each dot relates to one of these data points uh, as you can see and we've talked about this before hoboware is drawing a line between those points there's a way if you didn't want to show the if you didn't want to connect the points, there's a way to do that in your graph properties. I'll go back to my arrow tool there. Um, here we can, again, we can slip, we can say I want to convert my units. If I don't want to see them in degrees C, I want to see them in degrees F. Click on convert, and now they're converted into degrees F. This is a little filter icon. If you want to create a filter, you have to create a series first. I mean, sorry, you have to select the series first. doesn't know what you want to do. That's what it's telling me. You don't know what you're doing, which is also very possible. So <laughs> left click on the series to select it or with your arrow tool, click anywhere along the series and now select filter. And now you can filter on min, max or average uh, for that value over a specific time period. And again, our, our basic course talks about uh, filtering data. And I'm gonna now I can see up here you can see that my undo action is available. I'm gonna undo that. And we could go back several steps if we want to, and we can set in our preferences how many times we're able to go back. So if we go back and go back to degree C and to back to mark not marking points. The next selection is our pie charts. Pie charts are only available with UX90 occupancy and light on off data, which we cover in a, uh, a course uh, that talks about the UX90 product. 
here's where we can, uh, we talked about labels again. This is another way to access uh, graph labels from a, a, a quick access icon. And then this is a quick access to Habor help as well. The, under, the other data plot specific menu item is the view uh, menu item. So if you click on that, you get access to different types of functionality to uh, change how your plot is being viewed. Again, you can zoom in, zoom out. You can show it at full scale if you've changed your view. You can choose to deselect uh, and, and not show your details pane, which is right here. If we deselect it, you'll see it disappear. Same with the points table, which is the data table here, the title, the legend. So you can you can change those, um, turn those off if you want to, if you want a better view of your data. Most of this functionality that's in the view menu and the edit menu are available from the, the, the quick access icons at the top of the screen. And we're going to go through those next. Um, you can also select, again, deselect what you've selected. If you have a crosshairs, you can remove it. If you have subset statistics selected on your screen, you can choose to remove those, and you can bring a series to the front or send it to the back if it's selected. The only other thing I wanted to show you is if you hover over your graph with your arrow cursor and right-click your mouse, you will get the same functionality or a lot of the same functionality that you see in the Edit and View menus. So it gives you quick access to those um, selections. So that, again, like any other software, there's more than one way to get to a specific function. Under Tools is the Bulk File uh, Export Tool. Again, you can select multiple files to export uh, without having to open them in Hoboware, uh, Hoboware Pro. And we have a, uh, you'll see how to use Bulk Export in an in a upcoming video. Window is how you want to see your data files uh, shown on your screen. So a tabbed view, if we had another file open, let's open another one. So now this is tabbed, you can see. There's, But if you wanted to show both of them at the same time, you could tile them horizontally or vertically. So if you wanted to show them both at the same time.